reading is taken from Luke 2, 52. In Jesus' increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day and everything you give us so that we could yearn of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. The person chosen to chair our program is Miss Nellie Ann Wellington. She was born in Manchester and attended West Indies College Kindergarten Department. And she, Nadia, attends the Waltham Seventh Day Adventist Church. She works with the NCU Media Group as a radio announcer for over four years. She is also a cast producer of the Even Action program. Auntie Nadia loves boys and girls, so we feel comfortable in her presence, even if we make mistakes. Thank you, Auntie, for accepting the invitation to cheer our program. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, it was so lovely just seeing those children participate a moment ago. We are here in spite of the technical challenges that we were having a little bit earlier, but God is good, right? So I am happy to be here and it is certainly a privilege. To our board chairman, principal, teachers and staff of the WIC prep school, parents, distinguished guests, other family and friends, and of course our kindergartners, soon to be graduates, a pleasant afternoon to you. As I mentioned before, it is certainly a pleasure and a privilege to be chairing this graduation ceremony of the kindergarten division of the West Indies College Prep School. And it's a division, as you heard, that I was a part of way back then. So today is extra special for me to be sharing with you uh, as we celebrate our little ones. Now, it's certainly an exciting time, isn't it? In spite of and amidst the challenges, most recently, the COVID situation, we still have an opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate the growth and development of our children as they transition from the kinder stage to one. Well, at least that will be in December, not December, September. Come December, we will see them entering grade one. Can you believe it? I'm sure that parents and aunties and uncles and grandparents are saying to themselves, where did the time go? But, you know, we have to give God thanks. We have to give him thanks for his continued guidance and grace and blessing. And we know that we serve a big and strong and mighty God, right? Even our little nieces, my little nieces and nephews, you can say that God is big and strong and mighty, right? There's a song actually. Can we just sing that line? My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty mm -hmm. wherever you are. And little ones, I want you to sing too, okay? Sing for Jesus. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing our God cannot do. That's right. There's nothing that our big and strong and mighty God cannot do for us. And so today we are praising him for what he has done in the lives of our little ones, 
We are praising him because he has been the source of all things needed from the side of the school and also from your side as parents and guardians. He has been all things needed and has provided all things to get your little ones to where they are at this moment. Now, of course, things are different. Things are being done a little bit differently. As you can see, our ceremony is a virtual experience. And as such items, most of the items have been pre-recorded for today's program. And I'm certainly looking forward to seeing and hearing from more of our children this afternoon. So without further ado, I invite you from wherever you are uh, this afternoon, I almost said this morning, wherever you're watching, that you sit back and enjoy this moment as we celebrate our kindergarten students' achievements today. We will now be welcomed by Dayton Murray, Natanya Mitchell, and Kavena Tyndale, after which there will be special greetings that will be done by our board chairman, principal, and PTA president. Coordinator Ms. Richards, teachers and students at the NCU Early Child Center, members of the school board, parents, well wishers, friends, and fellow students of the graduating class of 2020. We have a great program lined up for you. Relax and we enjoy our All right, we will go straight to our greetings. We'll begin with our board chair person, Dr. Hoshin Clark, Dr. Jacqueline Hoshin Clark. All right, Doc, I think you have to unmute your mic. There we go, all right, great. Yes, thank you. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome back. I greet you in the name of Christian education. I thank God for this kind of education in the life of our school and its impact on our students and their families. Special thanks to our parents and teachers for a job well done. Congratulations to you all. This is a very historic event. In the history of this school, it's our first virtual or online graduation. You are extra special. And you notice what happened this morning with the virtual graduation or the online graduation, there are some unique challenges. And so all sorts of issues are possible with anything that is online, you know? And so I thank you for resuming we were to have gone on with graduation from 10 o'clock this morning. And here we are after 12, starting all over again, because you see it's virtual and anything is liable to happen or likely to happen. Nevertheless, it's still special. This is your graduation. We have watched you grow up. You have done so well. 
It has been my joy seeing you at the school, running around, having a grand time. Here comes COVID-19, interrupting this wonderful interaction. But keep hope alive. I think COVID will go away one day and we'll go back to what we used to do. You have done very well. Congratulations, parents. I must thank you for choosing our school. Our school is a wonderful school. You made a wonderful choice in choosing to send your child, your children to our Christian school where we have caring, wonderful teachers and administrators. As you graduate today, remember you are living for Jesus. Wonderful theme, you are living for Jesus. So Jesus is with you, even in the online crises that we are facing, Jesus is still with us and he's going to remain with us throughout this graduation service. Congratulations, parents. Thank you for choosing our school again. And remember, West Indies College Preparatory School is just waiting, waiting with bated breath for the children to come in for September to begin grade one. We can't wait to see them come. Continue choosing Christian education. You can't go wrong. I did that too. I chose that school for my children and I couldn't have asked for better children even now. I am so proud of our school system and the quality children that emerge from those schools. Congratulations again. As you move on to primary school, God bless you. And I'm gonna be sitting here and watching you as you graduate today. God bless you and thank you once more. All right, so I thank uh, Dr. Jacqueline Hoshing Clark, the board chairman, for sharing that uh, encouraging and warming greeting this morning. Well, I keep saying this morning because, as you mentioned, Dr. Clark, we were supposed to meet this morning, but uh, this afternoon as we celebrate our little ones for graduation 2020. We do have our principal, principal of the WIC Prep. Uh, on standby to bring us special greetings as well, Mr. Basil Tabernor. Mr. Tabernor, you can go ahead and unmute your mic. or if we can have our, our tech team just unmute Mr. Tabernor's mic so that we can hear him coming through. Thank you, Master of Ceremony. 
Miss Nadia Wellington. Okay. Our board yes, chairman, Dr. Clark. Our special invited guest speaker, Pastor Ashaya Lennon. Coordinator for the Kindergarten Division, Miss Paulette Richards. Our teachers and our support staff, parents, guardians and our graduates. To all of you, a good afternoon. I greet you warmly on behalf of all 386 students in three divisions of our group of schools, namely the nursery, the kindergarten division and the preparatory division. I also want to bring greeting on behalf of our administrators. This include our vice principal, Mrs. Pauline Forrest, our business manager, Mrs. Ellery Rankin, our counselor, Mrs. Lisa Rowe, all our teachers, caregivers, auxiliary support, and administrative staff. I am proud to be associated with this dynamic, hardworking group that are committed to the work and all who made it possible for us to keep school virtually and allow us at this point in time to be having and celebrating our students in graduation 2020. With all what with what our parents had done during this time of the shutdown, I also have to say thanks to them. A number of our parents probably can apply for a teaching job come September because you have taken on the task of supervising instruction and see to the completion of work assignments plus so that we could able to cover the curriculum and complete the term and able to do our exams and be ready now to take our break and look forward to the new school year. I greet you warmly and I am truly satisfied that you were able to bear with all the ups and downs as we strive to get this program off the ground since morning. We know you are a resilient set of parents. You understand the, the, the sacrifice we are making to make this day work. And so as I greet you, I thank you for your patience and your understanding and wish as the program continue that all will continue to go well and that we'll have a blessed celebration and graduation. Thanks everyone, God bless you all. It is with mixed feelings, yet feelings packed with pleasant emotions that I, your PTA president, on behalf of the entire PTA executive body, address you today on this year graduation day. Mixed feelings because it would be such a wonderful experience to be able to sit and watch you all march down the aisle and collect your certificates of accomplishment for successfully completing what may be the first chapter of your educational journey. COVID-19, however, has affected that reality, but I am so happy that it has forced our hands in creating alternatives to ensure that what must go on still goes on. It was Gregory Peck who uttered these words, tough times don't last, tough people do. And you, our precious babies, through your resolve and determination, have embodied its reality by weathering the storm that this global pandemic unleashed on you and by persevering. It takes guts, fortitude, and a will to achieve and be successful to do that. And I applaud you all. As a PTA body, we had accomplished some things and had so much more plans in the pipeline that were wearing with exciting to see come to fruition. Of note was our contribution and involvement in getting the school's infrastructure prepared by meeting the ministry's guidelines for accreditation in an effort to have it fully certified by the Ministry of Education and that we accomplished. We hosted a successful Fruits Day, Water Day, and many other exciting days geared at securing funds to assist with securing items necessary for fun fu full functionality of students on their educational pursuits. We were and still are so excited to serve you in this capacity and are determined by God's grace to do so when normalcy or close normalcy returns. 
We had a few items purchased and pending purchase that we wanted to deliver, but the closure of our ports and priority shipping has delayed some of them. However, in very short order, we should be able to present them, all things considered. We want to take the time out now to express appreciation to all the stakeholders who contributed in one way or the other to a successful year, though we were forced to function in unprecedented circumstances. We thank Andy Ritchie, who has been a constant support, encourager, motivator, and hard worker, and who has the interest of these young, precious souls at heart. Your leadership qualities and enthusiasm have been noted, and it has been and will be our pleasure working with you for the foreseeable future. Leadership is no small task, especially when called upon in unfamiliar circumstances to serve, but you sure did make it look easy. Keep up the good work. Teachers, your fortitude to duty and resolve the task have also been duly noted. You have indeed worked hard and your reward will be certain. You were forced to make significant adjustments to your schedule and mode of operation, and you were not daunted by this unprogrammed change. Your love for your job and these children were evident in how you adapted and moved with excitement towards molding these young minds to. And today is only a success because of your diligence and hard work, and we thank you. Mr. Tabana, we also have felt your presence and leadership in every aspect of our operation. You are indeed a visionary and a true definition of a leader. You were called upon to function in the unknown, and it is your dependence on your, on your master and will to offer premium level education to these children that has guided your efforts, and the result is clear. Continue to do what you do, and may God continue to bless you richly. Parents, how could we do without you? Your support for the programs and these children is what allows us to do what we do. You were called upon to act as well, and you did so without murmur. Some may say you had no choice, but you did. And it is that desire to see your children grow to be the best version of themselves that drove you to serve. Thank you. Children, you are the main persons impacted. We thought you were too young to manage, but man, were we wrong. You functioned like champions and fought through restrictions boredoms and distractions to be here. We salute you and pray that your will to achieve will continue to be fueled by your desire to make a difference. In closing, I leave with you the words of John Wooden. Don't let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can do. Thank you very much. Lady and gentlemen, we heard special greetings from board chairman, Dr. Jacqueline Hoshing Clark, also uh, pr principal of the WIC Proprietary School, Mr. Basil Tabernor, and uh, PTA president, Mr. Noel Koff. At this time, we will prepare ourselves for the introduction to our guest speaker for this afternoon. That will be done by Jaline Samuels, Dejani Thomas, and Kaylee Williams, followed by a special song by Tahija Kitson. So again, our introduction of this afternoon's speaker, and that will be followed by a special song. Good morning, everyone. and studies and lives in Canada. She attended Burman University where she completed her degree. Pastor Ashley allowed boys and girls. She works with the children's department in her church in Canada. Her hobbies are reading, storytelling, and listening to audio. Her job includes the practice of listening and to assist people in finding healing. Pastor Asha is a very energetic and fun-loving person. You can see it in her smile. She loves the Lord and is very happy and anxious to address us today. So class, 
let us listen as our special guest speaks to us. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much for that beautiful song. And thank you to the boys and girls who gave me the, I think it's the best introduction that I've ever, ever had. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for that. And I'm so excited to be here this afternoon. Um, so good more, good Good morning, good afternoon to the board chairman, to the chairperson, to the principal, the teachers, the PTA president, staff, parents, extended family members, friends, well-wishers, and most important, good morning, good afternoon to the graduating class. My name is Pastor Asha Lennon, and it is an absolute honor to have the opportunity to speak today at your graduation. God has afforded us the opportunity, as been said before, to be together like this. Now, the only regret I have is that I know it's mango season and I'm not there with you. I grew up in Jamaica, not like leave Jamaica when I was six or 12. No, I spent 18 years on our beautiful island being nurtured and raised to think, believe, strive, and I ate. I, I did a lot of eating. And let me confirm that no, we're in a nice Adan yard. I am who I am because of my roots, my foundation, because I grew up in a country where I knew who I was, where our history was taught and our uniqueness celebrated. I was taught of our history of resilient people who came and fought for emancipation after being taken from their homeland and independence, and then went about formulating a country as a mixture and appreciation of the motto, out of many, one people. We have built and created a space in this world where no matter where in the world you go, once you say you're Jamaican, everybody knows everything Irie. As a child, I used to think I was fearless. This of course is shown by the many, many scars I have. I have scraped my knees multiple times. I'm pretty sure I've had a concussion falling out of a makeshift tree house. My parents had a warm time keeping up with 
or antics, which is why when I show you the scar under my chin, you can imagine with me the story of how I got it. So one day my sister and I had or abrupt start and end to our singing career. <laughs> At the time, we believed we needed a hype boost and decided that the empty TV box was going to be our stage. Well, now I know now the combined weight of 80 pounds of six-year-old Whitney Houston and Celine Dion antics would not last on top of a box very long. And we went crashing to the ground. Why would I think a box could manage the pressure of holding two very energetic screaming girls? The foundation was shaky, hollow, and fragile. There was no way the empty box was going to hold us up. And I think this lead us, leads us to our first point for the afternoon. The place where we stand, the foundation where we stand is important. Now it's important to know who you are, your family, your country, your parents, but it's even more important to know whose you are. You, my friends, are children of God. First John three verse one says it this way, see what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God and so we are. And so we are children of a God God who is big and strong and mighty, a God who breathes stars, who spoke and formed the beauty of the world that we see. In Genesis, God looked at all he created and said it was good. Then he formed us. All other creations, he spoke, but you see for us, the heart of his creation, he used his hands. Or God who formed us calls us precious, he calls us special, and he said that you and I have purpose. Now purpose is an interesting word that some adults are still trying to understand. Purpose means that our life is important and that each of us were born to make a difference in the world, that God has an important job for you one that is specific for you. So living for Jesus means living with purpose. It's understanding who we are and whose we are. As a child of God, we are to be different. Kindness, compassion, and the ability to apply ourselves in every aspect of our lives is vital. We are not too young to live for Jesus. Throughout the Bible, God calls on a lot of people who are willing and he makes them able. In 1 Samuel 17, God called on David, a shepherd boy, to defeat a giant ooh, who had skills in fighting that David hadn't even yet experienced. But David was obedient to the call and purpose that God had in his life. A lot of times I feel feel like David, underestimated and counted out. That's why when Samuel the prophet came to David's father's house, Jesse, looking for the next king, no one suspected David. And it was in this instance, my little friends, that we learn from 1 Samuel 16 verse 17, that while man, while as humans, we look at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. Living for Jesus is being more concerned with our heart than how we look or even dress. It is not making a judgment about others to determine their value based on worldly measurements, but to remember that each person was hand created by God. Living for Jesus is appreciating everyone's story. It's living in kindness and with an open heart and hands towards everyone. It is believing and seeing every person as special, although we all have different interests, likes, desires, and talents. Be kind. I cannot stress this enough, my friends. You will always find space in the world when you are kind being mean, using foul language, or making fun of others, or fighting, that is not living for Jesus. 
Jesus wants us to be sunbeams. Being a sunbeam, have you seen them? Have you seen a sunbeam? They follow the light wherever it goes. They stand tall and radiant, giving their beauty all around them. Jesus wants us to follow him like that, to choose to be Christ-like in all situations, even when it's hard. I'll share a secret. For the longest time, I was afraid of the dark, like terrified of the dark. I mean, I had to sleep with the nightlight on into high school, afraid of the dark. Our fears and things that cause us to be scared, I want you to know that with God, we can conquer them. Imagine little David standing before this great big warrior man in all his armor. Do you think David was scared? I think so. But even though it was scary, David was obedient and he applied himself to the task God had given him. And you know what? God gave him the courage to stand and gave him victory over Goliath. Living for Jesus means our Father, God, gives us the courage to do difficult, and I mean hard things. And he not only gives us courage to do difficult things, but our God says he will be with us every single step of the way. So we are never alone and we are never left behind. Anyone who's a part of a big family knows that you need alliances. My older brother was my best buddy. He was my partner in crime. If you saw him, you saw me. If you saw me, you saw him. We were inseparable. That is until one day he went off to the corner store and refused to let me accompany him. I want to let you know that I started crying. In Jamaica, we say, I started a level of crying on parallel to any other wimpy six-year-old. I cried until my voice was hoarse, until my little black face turned blue. I cried until all heavens and my neighborhood er heard the extent of my vocal range. I cried until I was out of breath, which looked as if I was having an asthma attack, at which instance my parents rushed me to the hospital where the doctor diagnosed me with tantrums and gave my parents a prescription of beat your child. No one likes being left behind or forgotten or worse, abandoned. Or God or Father is not just sitting in heaven, but he promises to be with us. So we are never alone. We never get left behind and we are never ever abandoned. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a beautiful promise. Living for Jesus is always having Jesus with us. It's believing that even in the most difficult of times, we have a friend. And when we have a friend in Jesus, our foundation is strong. We can stand in front of giants like David. We can do difficult things and not be afraid because, because we know when we live for Jesus, Jesus lives with us. When we live for Jesus, we not only celebrate who we are, but whose we are. So boys and girls, to the newest leaders and future innovators, the creatives, the singers, the doctors, pastors, engineers, teachers of the class of 2020, live for Jesus. Amen. 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 That was so lovely. I was actually waiting for much more. That was really a lovely message. Thank you so much. Pastor Lennon for that. It was so relatable. And um, I'm sure that our little ones, right, boys and girls, you learned so much. Yeah. To me. Yes, really, truly appreciated that message. Um, you know, living for Jesus means not just celebrating who you are, yeah. we're celebrating the fact yeah. that you are moving from kindergarten yeah. to grade one come se September by God's grace. But whose you are, you belong to Jesus. And so you have to continue living for him. 
Again, thank you so much, Pastor Ashia Lennon, for that. Truly a lovely, lovely message. We are now going to prepare ourselves for a special word of appreciation from some of our students. Well, a couple of our students, a word of appreciation that goes to Pastor Lennon, and uh, that will be coming from Javik Gooden and also Ivana Robinson, or is it Ivana? Robinson, and then that will be followed by a tribute to parents and guardians. Oh boy, then I enjoy Auntie Ashley's presentation. Did you enjoy too, class? On behalf of the graduating class, I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to address us today. We really enjoyed the day you made. It's simple for us to understand. We believe that your prayers will always be with us and we promise to, to always remember the things you taught us today. May God continue to bless us and keep on working with children. We will live for Jesus. Thank you. Because you never neglect us, everyone respects us. Because of the way you helped us, anyone can test us. Our lessons were thought through Zoom online. You, you helped us complete them, parents. You are one of a kind. Dear parents and guardians, on this special graduation day, we would like you to know that we love you. Lovely. So that was a special tribute to parents and guardians done by Cairo Clemens, uh, Aviana Bryan, Nasser, Nasser Reed, Nathaniel, who I think I'm going to mispronounce the last name, Nathaniel and Nicholas, is it Trout? So sorry if I'm mispronouncing the last name, but thanks to our little ones for that special tribute to parents and guardians. Of course, we are here celebrating with our kindergartners for graduation 2020 under the theme Living for Jesus. And so far, it's been a blessed afternoon, hasn't it been? I think so. And uh, we are now going to get ourselves ready for another tribute. This one is going out to the teachers, a special tribute to teachers, after which you'll be hearing from Auntie Richie. Yeah. Miss Paulette Richards, I believe, yes, uh, she will be doing our school's report and uh, she is coordinator and class teacher for KG3R. So again, tribute to teachers followed by a special school's report. Teachers, Kylie Stang. A teacher is a thoughtful thinker who is excellent at educating amazing students. The classroom becomes a second home. Where teachers give help and encouragement so that students can reach their full potential. We thank you for your hard work Education. Thank you, teachers. We love you.
All right. Thank you, little ones, for that special tribute. That was Kenya Allen, Cahill Stewart, and Kayla Hill. We now invite Auntie Richie, Paulette Richards, coordinator, class teacher, KG3R, to I'm share the video. Go ahead, Auntie. Auntie. Go ahead, Auntie. The host has stopped the video. You can go ahead. We're hearing you. It's all right. Okay. Um, Madam Chairperson, could you hear me? Yes, we're hearing you clearly. Go ahead. Madam Chairperson, the lovely Auntie Nadia, Chairman of the Board, Dr. Jacqueline Hoshin Clark, Principal. Mr. Basil Tabernor, parents, teachers, friends, good afternoon. This afternoon, I'm truly anxious and satisfied and bubbling with joy for the first ever, ever in kindergarten. We can say that we are having a meeting like this. And it is satisfying to see the way we have settled to it. Now the school year began with great expectancies. We had left our comfortable home on the hill that we've been there for years. And we came down to the lovely West Indies College prep school, the kindergarten section where we were exposed to more space, better lighting, and all that it takes, we were comfortable. As a matter of fact, we had the Ministry of Education coming in to be with us, and they were so proud of what they saw that they were encouraging that other people can come in and see what was happening at the NCU Early Childhood center in the grounds of West Indies College prep school. Then we began the year with all our activities and they were all very good. We started off the year we had our programs. We visited the Mandeville Hospital, the children's department, took our children, they sang, we shared with the babies down there. And we also had radio programs, Auntie Nadia, where we met you. And it was wonderful where our boys and girls were able to stand up and preach the word of God. Yes, did I say preach? Preach the word of God. And we had a wonderful start. And as our president said, the program was so packed for the middle of the term when COVID struck causing a change to the entire program. But because of the resilient leader that we have in Mr. Basil Tabernor, when we heard about COVID, he turned on a third gear and he said he called on the teachers and the IT department and he decided to teach the teachers how to work the Zoom, how to work the gadgets. So that should, in case things get at the point where it is today, we would be ready. And Mr. Tabernor, I lift my hat to you for that because the teachers were ready. So by the time the prime minister said that there wasn't going to be school, the NCU Early Childhood Center was right in gear. We were able to start at the beginning along with the teachers from the primary school. So I want to plug in here to thank Mr. Coleman and his staff also for the wonderful job of teaching people like Auntie Richie to use those gadgets to teach. Thank you very much, sir. And so the school went on. There was never a dull moment. Some people might wonder why babies, you know, the babies, Sometimes they put us to shame because of the way they handle themselves. 
because it would seem as though they were born with what it takes to handle these things. Because I have a little um, grandson here that when I'm stuck on the computer, I say, BJ, come. Grandma, you don't know that. You don't know that you have to put in so up and he's naming everything. So this is the age to which we have come. So our little children, even the kinder one, they sat with us straight through the entire school year. And as a result, Dr. Clark, we were able to complete the ministry early childhood program. Thank you teachers for a wonderful job that you have done, assisted by Mrs. Mrs. Forrest. Because every time we get anywhere, I would call Mrs. Forrest, come in and push a word here and there. Mrs. Forrest, Auntie P, thank you very much. And this is where we are today. Now, NCU Early Childhood has always, we are always aiming to be the leaders in this entire Manchester. And we're going to be moving further out because guess what? Our very well-educated and, and innovative leader in Mr. Basil Tabernor, we're diving even deeper into this new year, into the gadgets. So could we put our hands, thank you, Dr. Clark, let's put our hands together for him. Because the classrooms will be having smart board, we will be having um, wash sink in most of the classes and we are preparing to the max for the boys and girls because guess what if whenever we should come back just as how we had to start we are planning for it again so whenever we start again we want to be ready with all the health things everything equipped so that our boys and girls will be free from diseases and stuff like that we are training them so thank you again, Mr. Tabernow and the teachers. So I would like to say, boys and girls, you have done well. You sat with us for one term and a half, doing assignments, bringing in homework, doing test papers. And I know my parents will talk about it, Auntie Richie again, more work again. Yes, and the children were able to do it. And in spite of all of that, we were still able to get each child at least being able to read three or four letter sentences. It was difficult on air, but our weakest child will go at least three to four words, sentence, read it for you clearly. So I want to say a big thank you to the parents those parents who sat with us every day, I call them my assistant teachers. And by the way, some of them even learned some Spanish. So parents, we will miss you. We will miss working with you. We thank you for choosing NCU Early Childhood Center. You could not have made a better choice. You will not find it anywhere else. So I want to thank you for choosing us. And boys and girls, we thank God for you because if you were not with us, all of this that's happening today couldn't happen. True. So we thank God for you and we thank God for his protection throughout the entire school year. May God continue to bless us. May he continue to shine upon us. I don't want to forget the people in the office because many times they are left out. We have Mrs. Valentine, we have Mrs. Rankin, we have Mrs. Clark in the office. We want to say a big thank you to you and all the teachers that assisted us. How could we ever forget those? We were introduced with new subjects when we came down, we, we climb up even higher. So I want to remember our PE teacher, our Spanish teacher, our library teacher, the cook, Auntie Denise, who work with us every day, cleaning behind us, right? And all of them, we want to say a big thank you to the entire staff 
those from the primary school who worked along with us and give us a chance to be who we are. Thank you, teachers. And may God continue to bless you. I want to also, before I um, close off, I want to say a big thank you to Auntie um, Blossom because we have a lot of talent amongst us. We have an artist in Auntie Yannick who's going to be painting the school with Dr. Clark. She's going to be putting fancy things to the front. And I want to say a big thank you to Auntie Blossom who designed and created the program for us today. We want to say a big thank you to all these special areas. May God bless us as we continue to work. Boys and girls, you are going to do your best. You are going to remain top students. I always say, because guess what? When the CXC, no, CXC was, was the thing there now, the, 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 the results come out for the primary school, the prep results come out, say I go on to CXC. When the prep <laughs> results come out, when the prep <laughs> results come out, and then you are going to be on top. And when the CXC come out, you're going to be up on again, top. Up again. Right there again. And oh. then when you're ready to graduate, and Richie might be with a stick, but I'm going to crawl and beat the stick for you. May God bless you as you go. Go with God. Do your best. And may the blessings of God follow you. Thanks. Amen, amen, amen. It's like we got another message a while ago. Thank you so much, Auntie Richie. Uh, Paulette Richards sharing with us, giving us uh, an update as to what's been happening at the school, not just with the physical plant, but in terms of even the developments with the curriculum and other areas that have helped the students to be celebrating this moment today. So kudos to the administration, the staff, the teachers, everybody that has come together to develop this program for the students. Now, at this time, we will be going into the segment that I think we all have been waiting for, especially the parents and the guardians and the little ones. This is the presentation to the graduates. And uh, things will be a little bit different, as you know, based on how we are experiencing today's um, ceremony. And this segment will be led out by class teacher for KG3B, Mrs. Blossom Brown-Smith. It is my pleasure to present to you the class of 2020. Kenya Allen. Nazim Barrett. Aviana Bryan. Zahara Campbell. Tewana Kai Falloon. Cairo Fleming. Dan Freckleton Javik Gurdy Christian Green Hill Caleb Lawrence Tahi.
Ikija Kitson. Makela Mackenzie. Natania Mitchell. Dayton Murray. Nasir Reed. Omari Roberts. Ivana Robinson. Galian Samuel. Khalil Stewart. The Johnny Thomas. Nathaniel Crow. Nicholas Strode. Havana Tindale. Kaylee Williams. Wonderful. Can we get another hand for all our graduates? Yes. Congratulations. The West Indies College Kindergarten Division graduating class of 2020. Can you believe it? Man, I'm sure parents and guardians, aunties, uncles, teachers, everyone is just so proud of their little ones today. And we give God all the glory and all the praise for how he's been leading these little ones. And we know that he's going to continue leading them as they excel, continue to excel. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so at this time, we are going to be having the class response that will be done by Nazim Barrett, Ethan Freckleton and Zahara Campbell. So that is Nazim Barrett, Ethan Freckleton and Zahara Campbell doing our class response. Madam Chairperson, Chairman of the Board, Principal, Mr. Basil Tabanur, Coordinator for NCU Early Childhood Center, our own dear Auntie Richie, hardworking parents and guardians, dedicated teachers, friends, and our special guests, good afternoon. I feel honored today to express gratitude on behalf of the graduating class. To our lovely parents and guardians, I say thank you for all the sacrifices you have made for us to be here today. We promise you 
that we will continue to study hard and do our very best at the primary school level. A teacher cares, a teacher shares, a teacher's influence lasts for the years. I would like to tell you about our dedicated teachers. Our teachers had to be our nurses when they got hurt. Our parents when we mess up. Our pastors when we needed prayers and guidance. And our friends when we needed comfort and companionship. Thank you, Auntie Nadine, for making us feel comfortable in Kinder One for your warm hugs and smiles. You will teach us how to hold our pencils and crayons. I must mention Auntie Michelle and Auntie Home, our Kinder Two teachers. You drill us with the phonetic sound of letters and the number names so that we could be ready for kindergarten. We thank you very much for all your hard work and dedication. To Auntie Blossom, our Kinder Free B teacher, we say thank you very much on behalf of the graduating class. You would always help us on sports day with the relay. Class time with you was about, about learning and fun. We will never forget what you have taught us. To our coordinator and kindergarten free, our teacher, Auntie Richie. Well done. I love that. You can you can hear some leadership qualities coming through, right? I certainly did. Thanks to Nazim Barrett, Ethan Freckleton, and bright. <laughs> very good, very good. Children bright. <laughs> very bright, trust me. And you know, as <sighs> she mentioned, as Zahara mentioned, you know, working working with Auntie Anna for even a child. I had a, the privilege one and two times to be there with them. And trust me, the children are amazing. When you hear them speak, when you hear them participate and they just step up to the plate, like it's nothing, you know, like they were born to do this. Really and truly, it's a pleasure working with these children. 
And I'm sure that for the teachers and the staff and everyone that has an opportunity or had an opportunity to interact with this class, this graduating class can say the same thing, that it indeed was and is a privilege. So we are coming closer to the end of our program for today already. Can you believe it? But it is coming up to that time. And so I invite Mrs. Nadine Plummer. She is K1N class teacher, and she will be giving our vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> It is with great pleasure that I stand here to give thanks to all who have made today's graduation a success. Miss Nadia Wellington, our chairperson, you did an awesome job. Thank you. Our board chair, Dr. Jacqueline Hoshin Clark, our principal, Mr. Basil Tabanor, we could not have done this without you. To our production team, Auntie Anna, Mr. Coleman, and Auntie Blossom, we thank you. For the beautiful decorations, Mrs. Smith, we thank you. Our parents and guardians, thank you so much for making it NCU Early Childhood Center. Give yourselves a pat on the shoulder. Thank you. To our teachers and staff of the NCU Early Childhood Center, we could not have done this without you. Hats off to you all. Our guest speaker, Ms. Ashia Lennon. Thank you so much for reminding the children that living for Jesus is the best thing. There's no way I could forget our boys and girls, the graduating class of 2020. You made all this possible. We are proud of you. Continue to shine bright. Continue to remember that only your best is good enough. Last but not least, Auntie Blossom for the beautiful program. We thank you. The graduating class of 2020, a big thank you to you. Yes, yes, let's give everybody a hand. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, uh, Auntie Nadine, Nadine Plummer for bringing the vote of thanks as we yeah, bring the curtains down on this experience for this afternoon. And we cannot, we cannot end our program without a special dedicatory prayer. And at this time, the vice principal for the West Indies College Prep School will be doing our dedicatory prayer. That's Mrs. Pauline Morris. Shall we pray? Loving Lord and our Father who art in heaven, we are so very thankful for your goodness and for your love to us. We thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to view this graduation today. And even for the mishap, Lord, we just thank you for working things out. We thank you so very much for these boys and girls who have availed themselves to be used by you, to live for you. And we thank you, dear God, for the work that they did, even amidst the circumstances that surrounded them. They were resilient, they were strong, they, they were dedicated. We thank you so very much for them and we thank you for their achievements. We thank you, Lord, that today we could make this graduation possible. We thank you for the parents who worked so hard with them. We thank you, dear God, that you gave them the strength and the fortitude to do what they did. We thank you for our school, for the provisions that you have made for our school, Heavenly Father, so that these little ones could have gone through the curriculum and have, could have done so well. We thank you so very much for all that you have done and for all that you will do. We pray, Lord, that you will help them, that as they march into grade one, they will continue to learn well, open their understanding and help them, oh God, that everything that will be taught to them, they will grasp. And help them, Lord, that when they learn the things of you, they will grasp it too, because it will fit them for your kingdom. So forgive us, Lord, of our many sins. And help us, Lord, that as we move on from kinder to grade one, that your blessings will continue to be with us, that your provisions will continue to be made, 
and that we will give you and you only all the praise and the honor and the glory. So be with everyone who was on this platform today to make this graduation exercise such a success. Bless us, we pray, and thank you so much for everything again. For Christ's sake, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mrs. Forrest, for that special prayer this afternoon. And with that, we bring the graduation exercise for the kindergarten division of the West Indies College Prep School to a close. Thank you as well, family, all family members and friends, well-wishers, parents, teachers, staff, everyone who participated, who joined to be a part of this special program. Thanks to the boys and girls, you are now graduates. You're not in kindergarten anymore. You're going into grade one. Can you believe it? You're getting so big. And remember, as you continue to grow, live for Jesus, right? Always remember to live for Jesus. It was certainly a pleasure sharing with you this afternoon. I encourage you to continue to lift up the boys and girls, lift up all the teachers, all the staff, all the administration, Mr. all the members of the administration, uh, Mr. Basil Tabernor, the board chairman, Dr. Hoshin Clark, everyone, Auntie Richie and everyone, just continue to pray them up and uh, ask that the Lord will lead, continue to lead and to guide them as they nurture and uh, grow, helping the nurture and growth of other children. I'm Nadia Wellington, wishing you a wonderful rest of the afternoon. We close with the national anthem. So I do invite you to assume that posture as we close with our national anthem. Have a blessed one. <laughs>